Hello, and welcome to the next clip where we're going to be looking at an example that involves timing, spacing, and arcs. So this is the bouncing ball, that dreaded exercise that's traumatized so many animation students early in their education. Now before you uh, back off in horror and skip over to a different lesson, I just want to ask you a simple question. Why do you think this exercise is used so much in animation education? The answer is that it's a deceptively simple exercise that requires a solid understanding of animation principles. So I'm going to start with the example that I showed in my PowerPoint presentation from clip one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on image planes. And what you'll see is sort of my basic blocking pattern that I had outlined in the PowerPoint presentation for a bouncing ball. So frame one, I'm up here, hit the ground at 13, bounce back up at 21 back down at 29, up at 35, and down at 41. And if you select the main control curve here for the ball, you'll see that that pattern I've already thrown in this file. So if I turn off my image planes again, and I just hit play, we can see that we've got the ball moving from key to key. If you look in the graph editor, I've also switched all of my curves to linear tangents, just to make sure that the ball isn't easing in or easing out at the start. So everything's moving in a linear fashion. So of course, in this example, it doesn't feel like a bouncing ball at all. And rather than spending the time worrying about all the nuts and bolts of a bouncing ball, I'd rather focus on just what's missing, just so we understand the animation principles. So when we run into something similar in our own work, we know where to troubleshoot. So one of the main things that's missing from this, if you were thinking about just spacing and how something accelerates and decelerates, is that the ball has no sense of acceleration or deceleration. It's just bouncing from one extreme to the next, abruptly changing direction. So right now, I'm not going to worry too much about timing. The pattern of the timing seems okay, but what I'd like to take care of is the pattern of the spacing. I want to adjust that so I can at least get some slowdown, some deceleration as the ball goes up in the air to its high point. So I'm just going to turn off the playback here and I'll bring my graph editor over here. So to look at the up and down, it's going to be the translate Y. So again, with everything being linear tangents, you can see that when we hit the high point, there's no slow in or slow out. We already looked at the general curve shape in the other examples in the previous clips. So what I'll do is I know that if I make a tangent flat, what that's going to do is it's going to have this curve go from a straight line and it's going to flatten out. And that means that we're going to have an ease out of this curve or ease in if I do the same thing over here. So, and now instead of an abrupt change in direction, we're going to have the spacing gradually get less and less and less as time goes on. And then it's going to eventually reverse direction and head back down to earth. So I'll grab these other high points and flatten them. So let's see what that looks like. That's not bad. That's getting a little better. But if we wanted to look at this a little bit more critically in our scene, we'll use another tool in Maya that helps a lot with tracking arcs. So I'm going to go back to frame one, and then I'm going to the visualize menu and make sure that you have the animation tab set selected or you won't see these menu items. I'm going to go to visualize and then I'm going to turn on create editable motion trail. Make sure that under the show options, you have the motion trail selected as one of the things you can view in your scene. Otherwise you won't see it. Now what's going on is that Maya is drawing a graph of where we are in space every frame and it's leaving back a little tick mark for where we're actually getting our keys blocked in. Okay, excellent. So this is looking okay, but right in here, that doesn't really feel like a parabola. That feels very linear. So again, I'm gonna grab the graph editor and see if there's something I can do to fix that. Now, these points at the bottom, because they were set to linear, the one thing that's nice about linear is it does give abrupt changes in direction. And this is a new pattern that we were looking at. We've looked at slow in and slow out, so we know that when we flatten a tangent, that's going to give us our ease in or slow in and our slow out or ease out of that key. But when we have an abrupt change in direction, what we're going to see is that the tangent is going to be very sharp. But here in this case, it's not quite sharp enough. We could edit this just a little bit more. 
When you grab your tangent handles in Maya, of course, one of the problems is that when you move one side, you're going to also rock the other side. So I need to unlock the tangents. So I'm going to grab all these keys that are at the ground position. And then I'm going to go find the icon to unlock the tangent weights. That's this one. So that's breaking the tangents. So that's going to make sure that I can move them on either side. And I think the default, yeah, the tangent weights are already unlocked for me. This should be the same for you. Now what I can do is I can point these tangents up a little bit more sharp of an angle and try and sculpt my curve. And again, you could really play around and experiment with this. But the general pattern we want is we want to make sure that we have a flat tangent here. We're coming out of that high point, changing abruptly over here. And we should see is in this area that we have some very nice, clean, sharp changes in direction. You can also come to the high points. And of course, then you can grab these tangent handles. You can do them all at once or individually. And if I hold down shift, that should lock the tangent handles here at the beginning. So if I hold down shift and drag, it will prevent the tangles from tilting up or tilting down. So hold down shift and then drag. All right, let's have a look. So those changes are now reflected in our motion trail. And sometimes the trail won't update unless you actually touch the object and move it a little bit and undo. So if you don't see your motion trail updating while you're tweaking points in the graph editor, there we go. Just be sure that once you've finished adjusting the points in the graph editor, you go to your object and just nudge it up and then hit undo. And that should hopefully get the motion trail to work out really nicely. So now I hit play. Now I've got a much better texture. It's moving on an arc. I'm getting some ease in and ease out. Now it's starting to feel a little bit better. If I compare this to what I had originally, again, I'll go to the graph editor and I'll just make all of my curves linear again. Then we can see how that affects our motion trail. So that's before. And there's after. All right, let's summarize the uh, final lesson here in module one by recapping what we looked at so far in all of these clips and the PowerPoint presentation in clip one. So hopefully at this point, we're able to define and understand these three principles, timing, spacing, and arcs, and that we understand that these are the foundation principles of motion design and animation. We also should understand at this point how crucial they are to creating believable motion. If you understand timing and spacing and arcs, you should be able to create acceleration, deceleration, and get your objects moving in paths that follow believable arcs. And like anything, it's always best to start with simple examples and then apply them to more advanced problems. You'll always find that really good animation doesn't rely on fancy tricks. It's usually just sophisticated use of basic principles that gets you there. And also remember that it's applicable across animation mediums. So even though we're using CG and we're using Maya software, whether you're working in 2D, 3D, or stop motion, these principles are still applicable and are really crucial to making sure your animation is working as good as it can. In the next module, we'll move on to some more advanced animation principles. See you then.